Come into God's presence with joy. In God we have an inheritance that is imperishable. Come into God's presence with hope. In Christ we have an inheritance that cannot be denied. Come into God's presence with longing. In the Spirit we have an inheritance that never fades. Come into God's presence with love. In God we have an inheritance that brings new life. Now please, together, let's repeat our opening prayer. God of signs, one word, breathe new life into us this day, that our spirits may be awakened to the joy and the hope of our glorious inheritance through the living Christ. Clear our vision, Holy One, that we may see the promise of this precious earth and in the life energy flowing through our bodies. Help us find the faith to believe where we have not seen, that others may see in our living and our enemy, the glory of our risen Christ. Christ. Amen. 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 Once again, we want to thank Mary for uh, providing our music this morning. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, let us now turn to hymn number 295, In the Cross of Christ I Glory, hymn number 295. <laughs>
sad news. Two year of Flint, Francis died uh, this morning about 2.30. I'm sure some of us know her. Um, it's just happened this morning, so arrangements and all of that will follow. So let us keep uh, clear of Francis' family in our prayers. And we know that our Lord has accepted her into his eternal kingdom. Uh, any joys or concerns? Well, I have a few. <laughs> Tia Danielle Smith is graduating May 17 at 4 p.m. St. John High School. Uh, come join us and uh, her family in celebrating her high school career. The party immediately following graduation is at the Smith Mansion. Sorry, Smith House. <laughs> Smith House, sorry. 609 East Fifth. And of course, uh, the church is invited to this great occasion. So we uh, would like you to know that. Uh, I had a, an email. Did you want to? Would you want to call this one in the room? Since we haven't gotten there in Indianapolis to see them, 
They brought the baby just for a few hours. Just for a few hours. We went to Oklahoma, rented a car, came in, brought the baby, and five o'clock the next morning they were <laughs> gone. Uh, <laughs> so it made perfect peace. We were so happy. So good. First time we saw it again. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, any other joys? Don't let me have them all. <laughs> we did get a little rain. Uh, we used the word little, but uh, we could use more. I was thankful for what we did get. We had some more. I noticed this morning all the farmers were uh, irrigating. Yeah. We had no rain down here at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are the farmers up there where we did get rain. <laughs> Coming from the north. So I. I
Bless those and support those who mourn. Bless those who are ill and would like to be here but cannot be here. Bless our communities. Bless our seminaries. Bless the pastors who are there in training. Bless the uh, faculty, staff, and all the students. Bless our schools. Lord, we ask a special blessing for those who will graduate this year, those who will go on to uh, greater and better things. We ask a blessing on our colleges, uh, colleges who will receive our students. Uh, we ask a blessing on all colleges, all seminaries, our community, all those who protect us around the world, bring them back home safely, quickly, and expeditiously. Be with us now and forever, this we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, please turn with me to hymn number 420. 420. Breathe on me, brother God. 420.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this year you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials. So that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which, though perishable, is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. Please turn with me in the New Testament to the Gospel of John. John chapter 20. And we're going to read from verse 19. If you're in the few Bibles, they're found on page 111. 111. Gospel of John chapter 20 verses 19. And while you're looking for it, you would remember last week, those of us who were here in church, we read John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, where we uh, came to the grave early in the morning and got a surprise. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was not there, he was risen. So now listen to the rest of the story. John chapter 20, verses 19. On the evening of that day, which day, that's the first Easter Sunday morning, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, it was a Sunday, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, which it would be today, the next Sunday, Sunday, uh, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, and Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many of the signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, this morning, Jesus said to his disciples, uh, Peace be with you, four times. And I want to use those same words. I want to direct your attention to peace. 
and may peace be with you. There's a story told, and you know, you, lots of stories about uh, absent-minded professors. And would you believe it? Uh, one of those was a professor called Albert Einstein. Einstein. He was a brilliant physicist at the University of Princeton. And the story is told, one day he was traveling on the train, and uh, the conductor came up, as they did in those days, to check the tickets. And he was fumbling around, looking in his pockets, looking at his briefcase, and looking everywhere. Couldn't find his ticket. So the conductor came up and said, uh, Dr. Einstein, never mind the ticket. We know you. I know who you are. And I know that you bought a ticket. So no problem. Just sit and... Um, carry on to the end of the journey. So the conductor went on checking the other tickets and he looked back and saw Professor Einstein looking on the ground for this ticket and he came back and said, Professor Einstein, uh, I told you, we, we know you and I know you bought a ticket. He says, there's no need to uh, find it at this time. So the professor turned to him and said, young man, I know who I am, but what I don't know is where I'm going. <laughs> the beauty of being a Christian is that not only do we know who we are, we know whose we are, we know to whom we belong, and most importantly, because of the resurrection, we know where we are going. And we are going to spend all of eternity in the presence of a loving Savior. My friends, today our scriptures promise an imperishable inheritance through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And even when the doors of our doubts and our problems and our worries and our anxieties and the doubts in our minds, and all those doubts and are shut up behind locked doors. Jesus Christ can still come through to those locked doors to be with us, to comfort us, to lead us, to guide us. I don't know what doubts you have in your minds today. Maybe if you're younger and you're graduating, you're concerned about the fears of college and what that means. And maybe if you're graduating from college, you're concerned about what's the world going to do for me or how am I going to manage in the world? And if you're a senior, you, you're concerned perhaps about other things. But whatever your concerns are today, I encourage you to let there be peace in your heart. Let there be peace in your mind, knowing that you belong to a loving Savior who will take care of you. He's promised that, and he demonstrated it in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, Pastor Adam Hamilton, he's uh, one of the great United Methodist pastors, pastor of the Church of the Resurrection. Uh, he said this, the resurrection of Jesus Christ didn't promise wealth, didn't promise health, prosperity, didn't promise power, but what the resurrection did promise, it promised, and Jesus Christ promised us peace, peace. Uh, during the war, the great war, WW2, and very few of us would know anything about that, but uh, during WW2 in Cardiff, which is in Wales, um, in the cinema they would put up a notice every so often. And the notice would sometimes read, an air raid uh, alarm has sounded, the siren has sounded. But the British don't panic. You know, the British are always supposed to have a stiff upper lip. And this 
story came to me to, uh, because uh, recently we had a, a, a mudslide somewhere out west. And I had just sailed into Cardiff uh, in the Navy on HMS Tiger. And a whole mountain just moved, went through the village of Aberfan, and uh, took the school out, the kids. And, of course, you couldn't stop us sailors. We were right there on the sea. We just rushed over there. Or we weren't concerned with logistics and food and how we would get. We just all went there and rushed in to help the uh, help see what we could do. And, of course, there were sad times. We found one teacher covering five kids, um, and the, the mudslide was over them. They, um, I spoke to some of the young kids and, uh, who, who were saved. One teacher threw a kid out the window and said, run, boy, or run. And that's what he told me. The teacher said, run, boy, or run. But anyway, in Cardiff, uh, every time the, air, the sirens went off, they would put on the screens, be British, don't panic. And it occurred to me it would be so nice every time we had some catastrophe or some problem, we could remember to be Christian, don't panic. Be Christian, don't panic. You see, fear is very debilitating. Fear keeps us from living our lives openly and joyfully and peacefully. Fear is a terrible thing. It keeps us running when our real need is to rest, relax, and enjoy repartee with our God and Savior. You might say, what's repartee? Well, it's uh, intellectual banter. Um, between you and God, me and God, it's, um, it's a two-way conversation. See, I'm in the habit of just coming to the altar or getting on my knees and praying and saying, God, here's my problems. Okay, goodbye, i got to go do something. But that's not what it should be all about. We should be there giving our concerns to God. Because he says, you know, give your concerns to your Father in heaven. And then we should be listening for the response. But so often we are so busy. We just drop our prayers there in front of God and we run off to do the next thing we got to do. Well, Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples. They were really fearful at that time. You can imagine they were there and uh, there's rumors of this resurrection and he had appeared to Mary, and then he appeared to a couple of disciples who were on the road to Emmaus, and they were there, hidden away, because you can imagine, um, you find the leader, you uh, get rid of the leader, then you've got to get rid of his disciples. Uh, we've been doing that recently, we got rid of Ben Laden, now we're getting rid of his um, disciples. And that's what they were afraid of. And they were locked up in this room for fear of the Jews. They thought the Sanhedrin would come to get them. That's the Supreme Court. And all of the Jewish um, rabbis and Pharisees and Sadducees. So they were locked away, hidden. Now, what do we do? And on that evening, Jesus Christ appeared in that room with them. And he said to them, Peace be with you. And my friends, if we have any fears or doubts in our hearts, we know that Jesus Christ is with us. And right now he is saying, peace be with you. We should have Jesus Christ firmly in our thoughts and in our minds and embedded with us. Wherever we go, we should be taking Jesus Christ with us. And he helps us to control our fears. He helps us to calm our fears. My friends, if we continue to have Jesus Christ foremost in our minds, we would live Christ-like lives. Well, it was the evening of that first Easter Sunday morning. 
and Peter was there, and John was there, and I guess some of the all the other disciples except for Thomas was there. And Jesus Christ came right in their midst, and they discovered that morning an empty tomb. And some years later, a man by the name of Bill Gaither and Bill Joyce would. Uh, Right, an empty tomb was there to prove that my Savior lives. And because he lives, all affairs are gone. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, nothing is too high for me to climb. No valley too deep, no desert too wide, no river too ravaging to, for me to not be able to get across. All of my affairs are gone in peace. Peace, perfect peace, is with me. Now if John had stopped writing at the resurrection, we might still have had doubts. Remember the Pharisees said to the guards, go tell them they stole his body. Go tell them all kinds of stories. But he didn't. He kept his pen going. And then he wrote the story of this evening. And it's the evening, Easter evening, that clinches the deal when we really knew that he is risen. He came, he said, look, here are my hands, here are my feet, here are the wounds, here are my side, touch me. And we knew that Jesus Christ was living. And when he got there, the Bible tells us, they experienced joy. Joy, joy, joy in seeing this crucified master. And then he breathed the breath of the Holy Spirit upon us, upon them. My friends, that's the joy that quiets our doubts. That's the joy that quiets our fears. That's the joy, the Holy Spirit that quiets our misgivings. There was now no doubt in the disciples' minds. There was no question in their minds. They would come from cowering men hidden behind locked doors and they would get out there in the streets again and preach in front of the Pharisees. And they would preach to thousands of people. In fact, Peter preached one day and 3,000 people received Jesus Christ by faith on his message. And that's because of the peace of Jesus Christ Christ in their hearts. And that's because of the resurrection and the peace that the resurrection gave to them. Now he was giving them clues all along and uh, how could you, before 2,000 years ago, how could you have imagined that this would have happened? But in John 14, 27 he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace. I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He says, I'm giving you peace, not as the world gives you peace. Now, how does the world give you peace? Well, going back again, uh, I've been in WW2 for a little while. Going back, uh, Britain had a prime minister by the name of Neville Chamberlain. And not all British prime ministers were really sharp, you know, they, not all of them were. Uh, fortunately, Neville Chamberlain, uh, Chamberlain had a, a minister of war, they call them ministers there, not secretaries, as we call them here, had a minister of war by the name of Winston Churchill who could take over after a while. But Neville Chamberlain knew that the fur was turned villages into uh, bomb factories, and he had thousands of tanks, and he had hundreds of ships, and hundreds of submarines, and millions of Germans putting on those funny little uh, hats. And rather than gearing up to meet this, he went over to the Fuhrer, who sat him down and said, got a piece of paper, sign on there, peace agreement. So Neville Chamberlain, the uh, Prime Minister of England, came back with a piece of paper saying, Peace at last! Peace at last! 
Only to uh, read probably the next day that uh, Hitler overrun France and overrun Poland. And, oh, I think uh, there's going to be a war. The piece of paper he waved in the press wasn't even worth anything. Peace without the Prince of Peace is no peace. Then in 1969, uh, President Jimmy Carter, and every American president wants to do this, wants to do the Carter. Got Anwar Sadat and uh, Manak and Bacon, and they got together at Camp David, and they signed a peace agreement. Here it is. Well, you want to tell that to uh, President Morrissey, who is fighting for his life in Egypt, that they had a peace agreement. You want to tell that to the, uh, the cops, C-O-P-T-S, those are the Christians in Egypt, who since that peace agreement have had their churches burned, have had their families killed, have had their businesses uh, burnt, and they've been killed. Do you want to tell that this peace agreement? How can you have peace in the world without the Prince of Peace? Since President Carter got that peace agreement signature, every president has been sending guys back and forth. Go right, go sign a peace agreement. And I uh, fail to understand how they don't understand what a peace agreement is really is, or who writes a peace agreement, or where a peace agreement comes from. My friend, a world peace agreement buys time for somebody else to arm himself to attack you. Now we, we know we have peace agreement guys running back and forth up to this week. Less than a week ago they were running back and forth trying to get another world peace agreement. Jesus Christ says, Not as the world gives you, do I give to you. He gives us a true peace agreement. Well, on that first Easter evening, Jesus Christ stood among his disciples, and he let them know that peace, true peace, comes from Jesus Christ and because of the resurrection. In John 14, 19, he said, Because I live, you will live also. So my friends, we don't have to live in fear of anything or anyone. Because we have a Savior who has guaranteed our future with His blood. He's written our future with His blood through an empty tomb. Let us remember that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection has made the future of all things possible for those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. My friends, and in all things we know that we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Now what's left out? Anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's all you. Jesus Christ coming, living, dying, and being resurrected, all due to the resurrection. My friends, peace be unto you. Amen. Now let us stand and repeat our hymn number eight.
together. We're not alone. We, we live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has found Jesus, the Word in flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and our knowledge by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek the justice and the people, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Repeat our prayer of thanksgiving in the bulletin. We do that together, prayer of thanksgiving. O oh God, our refuge is our strength. We rejoice that you are our chosen portion. You are our cup that overflows the eternal life. As we celebrate your Easter miracle of bringing life out of death. We express our gratitude and joy for the new life budding within us and all around us. Bless the gifts we offer you this day, that they may bring hope and new life to a world that clings to you and even now to the illusions of death's victory over the Lord of life. Amen. Please be seated.
Please turn with us to the benediction and the bulletin. Benediction. Repeat that together. Through Christ, God has given us a new birth of virtual living and hope. God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable.